From Jyotiraditya Sindhya to Milind Diora on the program this evening, as we look ahead at elections 2024, we are debating the great Congress exodus. I'm Bart Khadat, you're with the Mojo Story. Over the last few months and years, a slew of leaders, once known as Rahul Gandhi's aides and friends and the young Turks of the Congress have been leaving the party one by one. Jyotiraditya Sindhya, RPN Singh, Jitin Prasad, and now the latest among them is Milindyora, leaving many to question how long Sachin Pilot, the leader of Rajasthan, will stay. Milindyora has, of course, joined the Eknath Shinde faction of the Shiv Sena, describing his erstwhile party to be a party that has lost its way. Of course, importantly, his exit was announced on the very day that Rahul Gandhi launched the second leg of his Bharat Jodo Yatra, known as the Bharat Jodo Nyaya Yatra. Sources confirmed that there weren't really any serious attempts made to stop Milindyora. Milindyora's exit has been triggered by the seat-sharing talks within the India Alliance because of which his own seat from which he has been contesting, the South Mumbai seat, would have gone to the Allies. The Congress is making the point that Mr. Diora lost the last election. But Milind Diora is saying that it's the Congress that has lost its way and that for 10 years he had many options to join other parties. But in the worst years of the party, he stayed loyal. Now, the other important thing is that the BJP that has targeted targeted the Congress on the issue of dynasty, seems to have opened its doors to the Congress dynasty. In fact, what was once called the Khan Market Gang of the Congress seems to have moved its address to the BJP. To look at the politics of what is unfolding, let's introduce our panel on the program today. This is not just about Milindyora, it's about a slew of leaders. Uh, joining us on the program today is Sugata Srinivas Raju, veteran journalist and author of a recent book on Rahul Gandhi. Thank you and welcome to the program. Rashid Kidwai, author and journalist, somebody who knows the Congress inside out, is also with us. Welcome back to the program. Also joining us is Dilip Cherian, uh, the Master of Political Communication and All Things Branding. Uh, welcome to the program, Dilip. And also joining us is Congress leader and spokesperson Salman Soz. Gopal Krishnan Agarwal of the BJP should be with us. Uh, very, very soon. Uh, let me actually start by playing out the first comments that were made by Milind Diora at a public rally, uh, a public event rather, as he joined the Eknath Shinde faction of the Shiv Sena. Listen in. Delhi se national media se log yahan upasthit hai. Subha se bhot logo ka phone aara hai. Ki Milind ji aapne aapke family ka 55 saal purana rishta Congress ke saath kyon toda? मैं एक बात कहना चाहता हूं सबसे पहले कि मैं पार्टी के सबसे चैलेंजिंग दशक सबसे चैलेंजिंग डेकेड में मैं पार्टी का लॉयल रहा हूं अफसोस की बात है कि आज की कांग्रेस और 1968 की कांग्रेस जब मेरे स्वर्गीय पिताजी ने इस पार्टी में शामिल किया हुआ और 2004 की कांग्रेस जब मैं इस पार्टी में शामिल हुआ दोनों कांग्रेस में बहुत अंतर है, बहुत फर्क है। The same party that used to offer constructive suggestions to this country on how to take the country forward, आज उस पार्टी का एक ही उद्देश्य है कि मोदी जी जो कहेंगे, जो कहते हैं, जो कर्म करते हैं, automatically उसके खिलाफ बोलो। कल को यदि मोदी जी कहेंगे कि कांग्रेस पार्टी एक बहुत अच्छी पार्टी है, तो उसका भी विरोध करेंगे। मैं पेन की राजनीति में विश्वास नहीं करता हूं P A I N पर्सनल अटैक्स इनजस्टिस और नेगेटिविटी so, uh, since uh, Milan Diora referred there to pain ki rajniti, which he, of course, uh, used as an acronym, uh, Salman Soz, let me start with you, and I hope you'll give an honest answer. Are you pained by the exit of Milan Diora, or does, does the Congress really not care? And I ask you this because uh, there, is a, there has been a suggestion confirmed by multiple sources that there wasn't much of an effort to stop Mr. Diora from uh, leaving. In fact, he himself has expressed uh, a sort of hurt at the fact that there was no response at all when he was trying to raise his issues with the party leadership, with the, the Gandhi family. And apparently, the only thing that the Congress leadership conveyed to him was, could you not have chosen a different day? Did you have to choose a day on which uh, Mr. Gandhi was launching the second phase of his Bharat Joro Yatra? So are you pained 
Uh, or are you indifferent at Milind Diora's exit, Salman Sos? Uh, Barka, when uh, when any colleague of yours uh, leaves the team, of course, that's not uh, an occasion to be happy. Because if we were not happy with anybody, then we would basically, uh, you know, uh, terminate our association with them. Uh, be that as it may, I think uh, uh, Milind has chosen a path that, frankly, uh, to my mind, is uh, totally uh, opposite to what uh, he believes in. Uh, I, I know him a, a bit, uh, you know, we worked together in All India Professionals Congress. Uh, he was the deputy chairman when I was the regional coordinator for North Zone. So it is not a happy occasion. At the same time, Barka, we, we, uh, we are going through a difficult time, have been going through a difficult time for a long time now, for a, a, almost 10 years. But, you know, certain people have responsibilities and they, I think, have a responsibility to do better than what uh, Milind has done. And now to say that, uh, you know, I've been loyal for 10 years, what does that mean? It doesn't really mean much. You know, uh, I've been ever since I've come to the party since 2012, I've seen very difficult days when I was a spokesperson at a time when I had to defend against four uh, other people on any TV debate, uh, the fifth being the anchor. Uh, so uh, in some ways, uh, that is not the yardstick by which you measure your, your contributions. Uh, when when the chips are down, that is when you uh, fight the hardest. Uh, when when the going gets tough, the tough don't hide. And I think that is what, uh, unfortunately, that is what uh, Melinda is doing here. Uh, and and we should not, you know, uh, uh, Melinda has been a minister in the uh, in our uh, uh, government in you know two important portfolios. Uh, he was a senior leader. He had lots of opportunities in Mumbai. He's the one who should have been saying, I will do whatever I can to lift this party up on my shoulders. But uh, to say that, you know, I, I've been there for 10 years, it was, it was very difficult days. And this is not the party that, of course, this is not a party uh, that was uh, in, uh, there in 1968. It's a different time. Uh, the BJP of that time is also very different. So I, I, I'm disappointed, actually. Uh, more than paint, I'm disappointed. But, you know, uh, we, we are talking about Milindora today, but we're not talking about Danish Ali. Now, Danish Ali uh, is a member of parliament uh, from Uttar Pradesh. He got six lakh votes. We're not talking about Danish Ali because maybe that's not sexy to talk about Danish Ali, that he's actually joined our yatra. So uh, uh, maybe you guys should do a show about Danish Ali and why he's joined our yatra. Maybe no, look, so we have Dan Danish Ali, Danish Ali, member of parliament from the BSP, has indeed uh, joined your yatra. But the point is that Mayavati herself, her party, is not on the strongest uh, footing. And there is a larger pattern here, which I'm sure you recognize, Salman. So let me take that to Dilip. Uh, Dilip, implicit in Salman's last comment was that the media chooses to focus on the Congress failures or switch arounds or exits more than exits from other parties. Do you think there's a media bias here? Do you think much has been made of Milind Diora's exit? Or do you think that when you look at it in a continuum, Sindhya, RPN, Jaivir Shergil, and also we haven't counted the older lot, uh, uh, Amarinder Singh, Gulam Nabi Azad, right? There's been a slew of exits. Dilip, by the way, you're on mute. If you can just unmute yourself and go ahead and respond. Short answer to your question of whether there is a media bias. The answer is there is an explicit and visible media bias and there's no escaping that. Is there a story in Millen's uh, exit? I think there's barely a story there because much as we all love Milin, the fact is that he wasn't the biggest political loss to the Congress over the last few years. I think many of the others who left, including Sindhya, were much bigger, substantial political losses. That's one. The second thing is that as far as this continuum of losses is concerned, there are two aspects to it. One is the extent to which people are succumbing to the force and power of the bulldozer that is called the BJP. And the second thing is the state of play within the Congress itself, which has caused both grief and annoyance to not just the seniors, but also the younger flock. The fact is that there is a, a power structure change that is happening in the Congress. Many Congress people are not willing to acknowledge that, but that is what is going on. And there are people who analyze the Congress 
who can tell you that the quality of those around the key decision makers is probably one of the things which people are not willing to call out by name, but they are yeah. calling out by let me let, let me just jump in there. So you've made both points. There is a media bias, but at the same time, the quality of leadership, the quality of advice that is being offered at the very top has uh, faced a decline. Let me let me bring in uh, Rashid Kidvai there. Rashid, I think you, may, you wrote a perceptive piece about the timing of the announcement, almost to suggest as if it were chosen uh, to drown, drown out the headlines of Rahul Gandhi's uh, Bharat Jodo exit. But if Dilip Cherian makes the point that Milan you know, uh, is not pol politically a substantive loss in the way that Sindhya was. Why do you think he he drowned the headlines, and why would that be a concern, Rashid Kidwai? Go ahead. Yeah, so I think I think I have a you know a, a disagreement with Mr. Dilip Chadian and when he says that you know it's not a great loss. See, we must remember this Barkha that uh, just like you know Salman Soz, there are many people like Jitin Prasad, uh, uh, Jyotirita Sindhya, Milind Deora. Uh, uh, Sushmita Dev, uh, Priyanka Chaturvedi, they all kind of, you know, in terms of uh, perception, uh, a popular perception, I would say they were Congress linked to the great Indian middle class. You see, they were seen as, you know, doers, uh, you know, young, articulate, uh, uh, some, uh, you know, with promise people who had, you know, career, but they chose politics, etc. Now, this is all going away. People are not going to middle class, doesn't connect with, uh, you know, KC Venu Gopal and Jairam Ramesh of the world. So this is something the Congress needs to understand. Melin, you know, has a constituency in media. So when he says something, you know, he gets a lot of attention, which was the case with Jyotiritya and several others also. We know because, you know, he knows what to say, when to say, how to say, all these things, which mm -hmm. many of the people of, you know, I mean, Salman is one of them, I keep repeating. But a lot of people in the Congress, you know, they lack, they don't, you know, carry that kind of, you know, heft. Uh, 20 days ago, and I don't buy that, you know, South Mumbai uh, seat theory. 22 years ago, political party appoints, uh, you know, Milind Deora as a joint uh, treasurer of the AICC. AICC, now, yeah. Uh, now, since you credit me of knowing something about Congress party um, and uh, Mr. Salman Sodhud Bhout, see, the job of our treasurer is very important in Congress party. It can be in any other political party other than Gandhi's and Congress president. Then the treasurer has been traditionally the most powerful uh, person in that. And I believe and I understand there was a uh, promise to Milind Devra that he would be made as a co-treasurer. Now that was changed to joint treasurer. Another name was added that was Inder Singh Singla. And another name, Kanish Singh was also, uh, you know, meant, uh, was offered that post of joint treasurer, which uh, I believe uh, Kanish, uh, you know, uh, declined, uh, respectfully declined whatever way. Mm. So another day, I think, uh, you know, Milind felt slighted. And look at this, there is no communication. We saw what happened in July uh, 2020 when uh, uh, Sachin Pilot was disgruntled and he was about to you know, revolt. Everyone rushed to him, Priyanka Gandhi, Sonia Gandhi, Ahmed Patel, all of them. And Sachin was brought back to party and today he is a major asset for the party. But no attempt was made. So Rahul Gandhi's interpersonal communication are very poor. You know, see, they have a thing. I mean, just go jana hai wo jai. Now, you can't have that kind of attitude with people who have a link with the great Indian middle class, people who can, you know, fetch not in terms of, you know, their own elections and all, but in terms of perception, who can, you know, connect with the middle class. Because without middle class, you cannot win elections in uh, in India. And this is something it should be known. And again, what Mr. Jairam Lamech is saying... What could they have done? But what could they have done? You don't, you don't think this is because he didn't get a seat from South Mumbai. You don't think no, it's I think it's that. a question of communication. See, look at him. I mean, he and Rahul Gandhi should should have been talking of Priyanka Gandhi because, uh, uh, Barkha, you know that, you know, the family has been very close. A 47-year-old, uh, you know, in his resignation tweet, he mentions that, you know, the 55 year of relationship. Now, what is this 55 year of relationship? So I can tell you a lot of anecdotes, a story, etc. Uh, you know, how Govinda was brought in Congress, how, uh, you know, uh, uh, even the Ambani's were, you know, I mean, I'm talking about uh, Dhirubhai Ambani way back, you know, Murli Devra had hosted a dinner uh, in the early 1980s with Indra Gandhi and Dhirubhai. There are a lot of, there are a lot of history. We can't get into, you know, the specific. The fact of the matter is that Milin could not talk to Rahul or Rahul could not talk to uh, 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 Milin Devra okay. or Priyanka okay. Gandhi. Me... Lack of communication is very uh, glaring and disappointing.
let me let me just uh, welcome to the broadcast gopal krishna agarwal senior leader of the bjp namaskar sir uh, just your first thoughts on this great uh, exodus that has been taking place from the congress many of them have found their way to your party so you know whether it is uh, uh, whether it is a jyotirditya sindhya milind deora will now uh, has joined a party that is an alliance with your party in maharashtra jayveer shergil has joined your party so i suppose the question for the bjp is beyond the point that it proves about the congress's ability to keep its flock together why does the bjp need congress imports given that you have targeted the congress repeatedly uh, for dynasty several of these are dynasties they're political dynasties why are you willing or needing them at all gopal ji it is not the question of needing them barkha ji but uh, we are a political party and everybody who accepts us uh, our ideology or our leadership is welcome that's one thing but uh, the issue is a uh, 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 deep rooted the thing is why they are leaving congress if the congress want to blame for all this to the bjp as earlier they were blaming for every problem in the country they wanted to blame modi ji or uh, bjp now even their internal problems also they want to blame bjp the issue is they all these leaders are seeing no future in congress even if he gets a ticket from any power, just i was listening to my previous panelist he was saying that he was did he left because he did not get the ticket even if he would have he would have got the ticket there is no hope that he will win the issue is there is no future there is no uh, um, motivation to be in the congress the the issue the, the what is politics you have to work for the people you have to work for the current uh, uh, you have to have an ideology you have to have a road map for the growth of the people all this, you have to nurture your uh, leaders uh, improve their uh, basic uh, capabilities etc so all these things are completely missing only objective is that uh, they want to protect and pro project ra one family and it is not only dynast politics a, a son of any politician it is bjp never says he cannot join the politics but purely on behalf of his position as a son of a senior politician in bjp we oppose that and in bjp it is not possible we have around 18 to 9 20 crore Pop, uh, people members of the party there are so many leaders you cannot uh, move around in that way ki just because you have to have give space to everybody uh, 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 dindal ji used to say har hath ko kaam to uh, aur har kaam ko vyakti nir so that was the motto so that is the i think i think one point that you made sorry to interrupt uh, is a very perceptive point about young leaders not seeing a future for themselves ki ticket mil bhi jaye to jeet nahi sakte because the congress is, uh, is 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 in its lowest amongst its lowest phases in history shugata if you want to respond to that and then i'll go to dilip shugata please yeah uh, barka i mean uh, people leave parties for different reasons you know when I mean, the case of melan jora probably was very pragmatic because he had lost two elections and if he contested and he was there's no possibility of him getting a ticket again all that is a separate thing you know there are set series of reasons people can have their own uh, different reasons but what really disturbs me is that you know i mean the, the congress's response i tend to agree with, a little with rashid where uh, you know i mean the moment somebody leaves that person you know becomes a long time colleague becomes morally worthless and becomes a puppet of somebody else so i mean the the kind of harsh rejection that happens the moment somebody leaves does not inspire the others who are already in the party or who are sort of in two minds uh, to sort of stay back so mm. that, that that there's a certain kind of moral condescension which has gripped the congress which yeah. i think is 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 a been a very dangerous trend because you know forget whether milin deora is there or not or somebody else leaves or somebody else comes in but the thing is what is your response pattern to people leaving or coming in see when gulam nabi azad you know he was a very veteran leader you know people may not may agree with him or not agree with him or probably he was aligned with modi or not aligned that's a separate thing but the kind of language and phraseology that was used to debunk him 
you know there is a pattern there the moment hemant biswa sharma went out or somebody else went out who has spent decades and decades in your party and you there's a lack of remorse or regret or reflection in the congress party and that is something that is i think central they have a huge let, hr problem let me take that to dilip let me take that to dilip that's an interesting way of putting it you see there are two ways dilip of looking at attrition uh, one is to say people are not loyal values have changed uh, all of us have said that about somebody who's left us at different points in our life and it's a natural feeling to feel let down but another is to say what is making people leave right and i think gopal krishna agarwal though he's from the side that is taking the, the some of this exodus has a perceptive point if you do not see a future for yourself in any organization uh why would you stay in that organization first uh, dilip and then i know gopal ji you have an interjection but just quickly dilip chaudhary and then gopal ji and then salman yeah dilip yeah sure i think um barka the big problem is that mr modi has now come and created what i call an age barrier he is saying that those who reach 75 are no longer relevant in active roles in politics and that's the kind of practice that is being encouraged so many of these people who are no longer quite that young see themselves as in a situation where if they lose the 2024 elections then the number of potential active years in politics is going to be reduced substantially that's one the second thing is that uh, you know your your hr story and i think there the the options are two either you ignore the fact that they have left or you have to say that these were worthless creatures to provide some kind of confidence to those who have opted to stay behind yes there is the danger that those who stay behind will also worry that if they leave they will get abused and so you know that is expected to be something that keeps them and i don't think that that's the best way to build loyalty towards the party and the last point i'll make is this that you do recognize as you already said that if the bjp keep, bjp keeps on taking these dynasties then the nature of that party itself will be threatened uh, which probably explains why milin has uh, been taken by an associate party and not by the main party so the question that a, has been gossiped yeah. about and the, the buzz around, around delhi is that maybe the main party recognizes that this is not the time to take yet one more dynast into the party briefly gopal ji you had an interjection but on the dynasty question it is an important question you know we were just uh, you, looking at data published by the indian express looking at the 2019 lok sabha and it tells you that while the congress still has the highest percentage of dynast members of parliament uh, can, can we just look at those numbers there 31% of the congress candidates these are candidates were dynast but when it actually went on to members of parliament that number became much higher uh, in fact if i'm not wrong i'm just waiting for the next slide to come up it became more than uh, uh, more than 40% right 44% of congress mps now how did those numbers break down for the bjp uh, let's uh, let's move this uh, slide along and i think my question uh, as we wait for the numbers gopal ji is this that uh, only 22% in comparison to the congress were dinis uh, but in terms of mps we missed the mp slide on the bjp if we can go back one slide uh, it was about Okay, we'll do that again. Forty-four percent of Congress MPs were dinners. Twenty-two percent of BJP candidates were dinners, and I think twenty-five percent of BJP MPs were dinners. So there it is. So the question I'm asking is: If this goes on, Dilip Cherian says you will lose that one stick that you've been beating the Congress with, with and effectively beating the Congress with. Go ahead, Gopal. So, Akhaji, we <clears throat> we have to understand that <clears throat> basic reason is that the Congress people are not seeing future. why it is not the future the issue is about the in a political setup pol political party you need to have an ideology and an objective for which your party stands and if you are not correct, connected to the ground reality you see the stand of congress in the ram temple you see congress stand in so many issues where even they have not 
shied away from even criticizing countries uh, and undermining countries' interests. So people don't are not liking. Even so, their leaders are also disenchanted with the leadership vision, what, what they want to do, why they want to do that. That is one thing. The second question, your important question, is about the dynasty. What we are saying that a person, if he belongs to certain family, there is no restriction. Arena. He can come, but merely because he is belonging to a family, he is a son of son, such and uh, X and X uh, person only, that alone does not make him qualified <clears throat> to... But doesn't that weaken, doesn't that weaken, sir, your capacity to target the Congress? Dynasty has been, I agree, at the top, Mr. Modi is obviously a, a, not a dynast. Uh, and that difference remains. But if percentage-wise, the numbers of dynasts increase in the BJP, won't that make your attack on the Congress less effective? And briefly, sir, I have to go to, uh, to the others now. Very briefly. No, but I, I, I tell you, Baka, what is wrong is wrong. Well, <clears throat> that doesn't mean if you if the Congress is following that and that is wrong, we have to see that. If the issue is not, I told you the basic difference, the Prime Minister has been saying and BJP has been seeing that only one, if somebody's uh, other person is in politics, they definitely okay. see that. That doesn't, uh, I, think, I think the point you make about the absence of narrative, ideology, absence of a future Salman, these are, these are painful truths. The point is everybody who's left has left because they have seen a better future somewhere else. That's just actually the bottom line. Can you hold that against them? Uh, people are free to, of course, uh, pursue the future that they want. But to say, to suggest that there is no ideology, there is no future, I think that that's taking it a bit too far. The Congress's ideology is very simple. It's the most inclusive uh, political party in the country in the sense that we value all people of all backgrounds. We want them to be together because we feel that India's future is basically, we cannot leave anybody behind. India will be strong if everybody is uh, working together, if everybody moves together. Whereas the BJP's uh, ideology is a majoritarian 80-20 uh, ideology, which their own uh, senior leaders have uh, mentioned. So, yes, they have an ideology. We think it's a poisonous ideology because... Milin, Milin Diora said, sorry, if I can just have a follow-up. Milin sure. Diora said... Uh, that the only ideology that the party has today is to oppose Narendra Modi. Dilip Cherian on a previous show uh, said that, uh, you know, to be an opposition is not the same thing as being an option. In other words, and that line really stays with me of Dilip's. In other words, the question is, what do you stand for? No, no, no. What do you course, stand I mean, for? Let, let, let me come to Milan's, let me come to Milan's uh, 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 pain con concept of, you know, uh, everything that the Prime Minister says, we're opposed to it. If you think about uh, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh and what, what the BJP was, was doing at that time, do you think they were garlanding him at that time? Wasn't, wasn't candidate Modi saying that heart met Julia Penny? Who was saying that? What, 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 you think they were worshipping uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh? The Prime Minister of this country, uh, Narendra Modi, is leading India to, in our view, to a, on a disastrous path. We are opposed to that. And we will oppose that no matter what. Now you say, what do you stand for? Of course, we stand for the other side, which is basically taking everybody along, making sure that growth and uh, prosperity are equitable, which in this country, it is not. We're headed towards a highly okay. unequal society. So we, we will push along those things. So for Milan to say, oh, they're only opposing uh, their uh, Prime Minister Modi, it's almost as if uh, Arun Jaitley and Sushma Suraj were supporting Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. There are certain okay. things where we will support the government, and that will obviously be primarily on the international, uh, you know, uh, in the international arena. But even there, the prime minister has undermined India's national security by basically allowing China to take Indian land and then saying that nobody is encroached. He has actually helped China gain okay. territory. You, this conversation has kind of gone in a different direction with India-China, and I don't want it to, because we can have a separate program on that, but... No, we, 
but but but, no, but no, you stand for i was trying to respond okay fair enough fair enough fair enough you've made your points i just want to say that mr khargi in the meantime has doubled down on the mandir issue uh, and 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 made a made a comment that i'm sure all of you will want to respond to so just playing that briefly and then shugata and rashid and then we'll take last comments uh, this is malika arjun khargi ye jo hai manipur ko modi ji aate hain vote puchne ke liye लेकिन जब मोदी जी यहां के लोग मुसीबत में हैं तो उस वक्त इधर मुंह वो समंदर के ऊपर शहर करते फिरते हैं और बैठे जगह जप करते बैठते हैं राम 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 अरे भाई मुख में राम बगल में छूरी ये मत करो जनता के साथ यही हम चाहते हैं Mumbai Mayor Ram Bagal Mechuri uh, is a doubling down shugata of comments that are not probably I could be wrong going to go down well with a lot of people shugata Hang that's on we right. can't uh, we need to unmute you yeah go ahead yeah go ahead yeah so that's political rhetoric and I think we should I mean Mr Karge is just speaking uh, at a rally and he's sort of addressing a lot of people who are his supporters but I think he's entitled to say what he's saying because okay. Mr Modi says far worse things so but 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 even on the ram issue you know if if somebody is going to sort of extrapolate just the ram aspect from that see even there you know i mean i i mean i completely respect what salman soz was trying to say uh, but the thing is that have you woven an effective strategy to counter the bjp see that is the question you are you are trying to claim to be on the right side of history of of everything you know values and all that but how do you sort of put it across to people so that they come out and vote for you and believe in you so that is the that's a very important question here and yeah. and also even on the ram temple issue barka if you have if you have been looking at the social media you know platforms see the congress more than emphasizing its constitutional position on why it is not attending it is taking great joy in saying that the sankracharyas are not going but the reasoning that the sankracharyas are offering you is very very exclusive they are saying the dharma shastras are not being followed but if you go down that line then i think whatever salman so just said that it's, okay. it's an inclusive party will automatically sort of you know when exclude i think people. i think the phrase that you that you used was a correct one of moral condescension of believing that you're superior salman i saw your hand go up a 30 seconder there and then rashid salman point is salman i can't yeah yeah just, just start again it, salman yeah I, I think this this notion that uh, the Congress is uh, uh, condescending mm. and uh, uh, doesn't know what it's doing, you know, these things are, you, you know, the, these are opinions. What can we say? People have opinions. Maybe this is a perception there is. But let me just, for for a moment, just direct your attention to what happens when you have uh, an institution. Uh, sorry, when when you have a country where authoritarianism is taking root. By the way, which in my in view in india it is all you have to, you know today just today i am reading a newspaper it is 18 pages four of them four full page ads of one man featuring one man that is the prime minister and on the fifth which is the front page of this newspaper is a, uh, is a banner ad of the prime minister five big things in one newspaper plus the news that is used what will the opposition do you think about it the reason you may not be hearing about the opposition is that because the media doesn't really carry the opposition i anymore. think that's i in think india. that's and, and i i one, i don't one, know about one, i don't one, know about one, others one, but if you look one, at rahul gandhi's one. sorry i have to respond to that if you look at rahul gandhi's first bharat jodo yatra when it was actually a new and disruptive idea i think it got masses of media coverage i i i think when the idea is good when the idea is disruptive uh, i think the congress does get media coverage you could we could have a different debate about you know the state of broadcast media in particular where i might uh, you know share your misgivings but let me let me just get sorry i was going to come to rashid uh, but i'll come to gopal krishna agarwal because i'm sure he wants to respond then rashid and i'll give dilip the last word uh, uh, go ahead uh, gopal ji so oh, abarka ji we have to understand that uh, if you say that what i am saying is the only right thing that is what the uh, arrogance is what the in a democracy majority will prevail what minority will have space but the uh, in democracy what democracy means you will uh, the uh, majority will elect 
and if you do no, not but democracy understand... also is to protect the rights yeah, of the individual so no matter protecting? how small no matter so that, how that, small that, their numbers may be yeah, that yeah, is also so, democracy yeah yeah that's what so we yes. the modi ji's schemes every scheme welfare scheme the, their uh, space in the politics everywhere bjp is looking after every every scheme what be congress uh, politics is appeasing minority that is rejected by the people of the country and they are not uh, wrong in that because uh, unless uh, how congress will work what uh, rahul gandhi ji say is only right or what the people will say if the people okay. want india's people want ram temple everybody is celebrating ram temple they will oppose it so the issue is in democracy you have to respect the opinion of the people the, and in the democracy you are leader if you take the people's concerns their wish, their aspirations their ideas their opinion and bring to the platform uh, central platforms okay. if okay. you are saying That... my opinion you have to all have to accept that is arrogance and you will not okay. a, people will let, not accept this is the basic let, let problem me, let me bring in uh, salman just give me a second because rashid and, and dilip have really been waiting a long time i and i think i did come in on the point that you wanted to on what is a democracy but let me pick up ideological confusion gopal ji said democracy is the majority sentiment at which point i interjected and i said no it can't be numbers alone it has to protect the last person even if that's one person but the congress itself along with the opposition came up with a very problematic slogan on caste census when they said jitni abadi utna haq they had to roll that back you see the reason i raise this is there is a confusion in my opinion in the opposition on how how to counter the bjp and i think that confusion is reflected every day in this position that position sometimes soft hindutva sometimes flirting with hinduism uh, you know then thinking caste census will be the big issue then saying adani will be the big issue now salman so says our distinctiveness is we are inclusive but some might point to the uddhav thakre shiv sen and say that was a hindutva party rashid go ahead yeah so i think uh, barka you are absolutely right you see job of a political party is to you know win election or seen as you know winning election the congress is making no attempt today i am given to understand that the congress has a as a chance to replicate what it did in telangana in uh, perhaps in andhra pradesh uh, and but look at that you know rahul gandhi's bharat jodo yatra is spending lot of time of on the plank of you know political uh, correctness and nyay etc in the northeast and we all are familiar with the dynamics and politics of northeast that where you see uh, the outcome may not be in uh, in favor of congress to the slightest of uh, 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 you know chances so you look at rahul gandhi is going to cover the second phase of bharat nyay yatra is going to cover some 350 plus lok sabha seats where congress is at present uh, you know has 14 lok sabha members now if you one if you is to be you know double it first of all nobody believes that it is a doable thing it is just going to be 28 so therefore i think you know congress is not clear what it intends to do particularly rahul gandhi he doesn't know what to do with himself he keeps doing this political correctness is not a you know a passport to win elections we have seen it in bhatta parsol we have seen in lakhimpur khiri we have, i can give you a lot of instances so therefore the congress is not actually very serious about you know contesting 2000 but why uh, not are they in denial are they in denial because because there is no there is no role defined for rahul gandhi and mr malikarjun karge looks at the you know at at the gandhis for direction etc for clarity to take a step and therefore there is a lot of uh, confusion is there and this is a real you know real root cause of problem of congress failure so mr mr cherian to you uh, the the last word unless the two politicians want to come in right after that with two short closing comments um, and shogata to you also but let me try and get the leap to frame the closure of this for us what i'm picking up is that the mr rahul gandhi has essentially taken the position as was said earlier in the program jisko jana hai jaye we will rebuild the congress with those who choose to stay back but as rashid said rebuild it with what ever since the decision to not attend the mandir uh, has been talked about i've heard so many varying explanations one leader in the from tamil nadu mohan kumar mangalam on this program said it's a return to nehruvian secularism another leader said nahi hum jayenge but we'll go a few days later right there is complete ideological confusion there is the absence of a story and there's the absence of a face as i see it what do you see but the real answer is that there are no ideologues 
in the Congress party. And they're expecting Rahul Gandhi to fill up that entire space. And his take on ideology is not politically likely to win in the short run. That's why. That's the problem. The core problem is that. The second problem that they're facing is that they're not practical. They, the practicality is always either second guess or stymied by the fact that Rahul Gandhi's, the, the coterie around Rahul Gandhi wants to block pure practicality. And, you know, an example is the way they are working in Bengal. A, a clear case of where practicality is not allowed to triumph because some blokes who are close to Rahul are able to get an upper hand and stymie the party president whose job it is to do these things. Number three, the fact is that today the country is looking for an alternate ideology. And that ideology cannot be, as Milin Tevra says, and as a lot of people say, cannot be simply opposing what Narendra Modi does. The Prime Minister's uh, proven time and time again that he's pretty much Teflon coated. Get on with it. Accept that in practical political terms and come up with something else. That's the problem. That's where the gap is. I, I think that's very accurately said. So Salman, a quick 30 seconder, then Gopalji and Shugata, if you want to come in after that. You've said we stand for being inclusive, but you define yourself against what you're not vis-a-vis -vis the BJP. You don't actually define yourself on your own terms. Barka, first of all, let me let me address uh, the Ram Temple uh, issue because that, okay. that came up. As far as okay. Congresses are concerned, you know, there are millions of Congresses. I mean, most of our uh, party uh, has, you know, obviously, uh, uh, as with the rest of the country, uh, most of them are Hindus and they love Bhagwan Ram. We love Bhagwan Ram. In fact, I grew up watching the Ram. It was great, great. It was wonderful to see uh, the, uh, you know, Lord Ram, uh, Hanuman. It was great. So that is the kind of India I grew up in. That is the kind of India we want, where we respect all religions. And of course, we will not allow RSS and BJP to become the take ours of Hinduism. That is what we oppose. So we do not oppose. Of course, we do not oppose the Ram Temple. It would be, I mean, what, uh, which person in India in their right minds would oppose the Ram Temple? So Congress is for Congress. Ra uh, uh, Lord okay. Ram is a supreme being, and there is no, there are no two ways about it. So we will go. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, pay our respects whenever we want on our own terms. So there is, uh, you know, I just want to make okay. sure, sure that the okay. RTH okay. and BJP and RSS are aware of that. That is what that is what we would like. As far as the ideology is concerned, look, I mean, nobody wants people to leave the Congress party. We have not. There is no arrogance as far as I'm concerned or as far as the party is concerned. But, of course, some people will leave. They'll see greener pastures when the chips are down. That happens. That's natural. But... There are many of us, I mean, millions of us who are staying because we know that we have to stay and fight for this country. Okay, Gopalji, last uh, closing comments. Kaji, we as a party are very much grounded. The Prime Minister or all of our party leaders are well connected to the people and we are not imposing anything on the people. What the people want, we are doing. We are not concerned with what Congress is saying or doing. It is the people that is important for us and that is uh, the uh, support that we are getting. If they want food, we are providing them. If they want development, economic development, that is there. They want national pride, we are doing. They want Ram Temple, we are doing it. So the issue is simply that who is Congress to say ki we will not allow BJP or RSS to, uh, when the, uh, to come uh, above? When the people of this country, are they not believing in democracy? If the people of this country have elected BJP and if the people are supporting RSS ideology, who uh, in the democracy, they, we will have our respect. So the thing yeah. is, for us, people is important. For them, there are different issues which people are not accepting. Okay, let me close with Shugata. Uh, Shugata, uh, you know, you have your book is called Strange Burdens. Uh, Rashid also has multiple books out on, on Rahul Gandhi and the different prime ministers of India. Uh, you know, is the problem Rahul Gandhi? Or is the problem the coterie? It, either it's described as the coterie or it's described as Rahul Gandhi. Which one is it? No, I mean, I have clearly said in my book that Rahul Gandhi should have, should sort of be the custodian of the values of the Congress party if he wants to be an ideologue. 
and leave the politics to somebody else. So he should always sort of clearly choose his role. But that's what party. he's being. That's what he he will say he's no, doing. He, he has to say that he won't be the prime minister of this country. He should sort of give up his power ambitions and just mm. pursue the aspect of ideology because he's good at doing that. So I don't see anybody as a problem, you know, until unless you come up with the right kind of thing. So I go back to this aspect of uh, uh, something that I keep going back to, Barka, which is the Congress lacks a cultural narrative. You know, you your ideological positions cannot be just constitutional. See, constitutional things also have to have cultural extensions to work. So if yeah. you build, if you say something, you can't just be about reason, enlightenment reason. You also have to have emotion. So that that's is a, where that's the Congress, a, that's where the yeah, Congress that's a, is facing a huge problem. So Rashid, even to very counter quickly, the Ram, Ms. even, yeah. so sorry, Barka, one last thing. Even to counter the Ram thing, you you should have worked on it for the next last 10 years, you know, because the Ram temple problem is not yesterday or day before. There was a lot of violence associated with it. So you can't just embrace the temple like that. But you had to work on a narrative for the last 10 or 20 years. I, 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 yeah, I do have to close. But Rashid, on this idea that Rahul Gandhi should at least say, if he's the ideologue, if he's the sort of JP of the opposition today, walking across India, he should say he, he's, ne he's not interested in being prime minister. Do you want to come in on that? And then we really do have to. No, that, Barkha, I think Rahul Gandhi needs to be just a lot more pragmatic and realistic. He should not be looking at, you know, this kind of fancy, you know, titles that are being given to him. And he should, you know, first of all, he should discard this, you know, the political discards. I don't want to name them, Barkha. You know them. Some of them are your friends. See, no. he's... Fancy. <laughs> Why have you named my friends? <laughs> but anyway. Or, or, or okay. political nobodies. No, no, who are political nobodies and they are the ones who are taking his mind space. And that is the tragedy of Congress. Okay, the political nobodies are occupying not just the mind space of Rahul Gandhi, but also the decision-making uh, capacity. I think that might be something Salman Soskar officially agree with, but the rest of us can agree with. Uh, thank you very much to everybody. Dilip Cherry and Shogata Srinivas Raju, Gopal Krishna Garwal, Rashid Kidwai and Salman Sos and to our audience as ever. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow. Mojo's story has always made a commitment to its viewers to go to where the story is. And as you can see here, we are at the epicenter of the Israel war on Gaza. We are right at the front line, about one mile from the Gaza Strip, as is the Israeli military gets ready with its tanks and its gunners to begin its final frontal assault that will take troops into Gaza. As we said, we are not like other organizations. We believe in giving you all sides of the story objectively and as much as possible from the ground. And that's exactly what we're doing here, covering the biggest global story today from the epicenter of the war zone. So please, we need your support. Support us, become a Mojo member, subscribe to us, spread the word and thank you for your support.